Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the fourth video in the KQL Intermediate series. In the last session, we finished a two part series on Summarize. In this session, we'll introduce visualizing information on charts and graphs. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In the previous two sessions, we focused on summarizations. Summarizations are easily transferred into charts and graphs in order to provide a visual element to your data. When we think of charts and graphs, we may envision a PowerPoint slide deck and higher level briefings. While this is one use case for charts and graphs, there are many others. If you have large data sets, it can be challenging to find trends and anomalies in the data. Seeing the information visually helps you to identify patterns. If you own an Azure resource and want to see the utilization and consumption over time, graphs are a great way to provide that information. During an investigation, you may want to see spikes in activity or align the activity with alerting to identify trends. Let's start off by finding the volume of sign-ins in our environment in the last week. We can use Summarize to help us provide a count, and we can decide whether the data would be better divided into daily or hourly buckets. In this case, let's try to bin in hourly buckets. As we look at the numbers, we can see some differences each hour, but it's challenging to make sense of it over a week's time span. In the GUI, next to the results, there's a chart option. When we click this, we can see it automatically renders the data in a column chart. We can see spikes in the daytime hours and lulls at night, as well as low levels of activity over the weekend. KQL provides several options for charts and graphs. To select these options, we can add an additional line with render. After we type in render and hit the space bar, IntelliSense gives us a list of options to view the data. Let's change this column chart to a time chart. When we run the query, we can see that it plots count values every hour. If we wanted a lower level of resolution, we could change the time domain from one hour to one day. We can increase the resolution by changing it to six hours, back to one hour, or even 10 minutes. If we continue to increase the resolution to every one minute, it tells a very different story. We can see the baseline level of sign-ins with many spikes of activity. The concept of resolution is important because in the last five queries, we pulled from the same data set, but the information can be interpreted differently based on how it's presented. Let's go back to every one hour for now. Let's change from a time chart to a scatter chart. The scatter chart is essentially a time chart without the connecting lines. We can also conduct advanced mathematics such as linear regression, but that's beyond the scope of the intermediate series. There are some charts like the pie chart that we can't generate with a basic level of summarization. We can see when we select column chart, it's the same as the original chart option from the GUI. We see a bar chart runs horizontally on the screen. Let's comment out our summarize and render lines and switch back over to results. We're now back to the tabular sign-in data. Let's refocus on identifying all the sign-in error codes and the counts of those in our environment. In this case, let's view it as a pie chart. If we comment out the render pie chart, we see we have one column of labels and one column of quantities. This is perfect for a pie chart. Let's change it into a column chart. And finally, let's view it as a scatter chart. You can see that in some cases, the data being presented just makes more sense in one type of graph or chart versus others. Let's do another example. Let's look at the Azure Network Analytics custom log table, which has our network firewall events. First, let's take a sample to see what the data set contains. We can see it logs our network firewall rules and network activity. 
Since there are so many rows, let's first project the fields of interest so we can narrow down our focus. I've selected four fields that we can use to make different graphs with. The timestamp, the network rule, and the devices associated. First, let's just focus on the timestamp and network rules and ask the big picture question wanting to know how often each type of rule is applied on our network so we can understand traffic usage patterns and look for anomalies. We can start with distinct NSG rule underscore S, which shows us all of the network security group options. Let's take out some that aren't of interest and change the distinct to a where statement to filter for only those records. Now we can work on our summarize line. Let's get the count by time generated in bin buckets of one minute and SGR rule. Now let's render a time chart. You can see there's no need to sort by time generated. If using a graph or a chart, it's automatically placed in time order. Now that we have this initial snapshot, let's zoom in and out using the time domains and adjust the resolution based on the bin buckets. If we place our cursor over each line, we see a label. We can see that the deny all inbound rule dominates the chart. We can't really see movement in the other lines. Let's remove it from our where statement to see the patterns of the other rules. Let's change the time span from 24 hours to seven days. And let's change the bin bucket size from one minute to one hour. Let's look at different chart and graph styles. You can see there's many variables, and depending on the use case, you may have to play with the data to be able to present it in a way that answers the intended questions. Let's change network rules now to VM1. We can see network traffic volumes by each device, but we can see the unnamed devices are dominating the chart. How can we exclude those without a name if the field is a string data type? Let's add to our where statement to remove empty values. When we run the modified query, it looks a little crazy and hard to make sense of. We can hover our cursor over each line to highlight it. Let's think about a few use cases for a moment and think about how you would write a query to answer the question. I think another person was logged into my device at the same time as me from a different location. Can you make a chart that shows login activity by location and time? Here's another use case. We have 10 people on the development team and someone is using the maximum allowable internet which is causing operational impacts for others on the team. Can you create a chart that shows internet consumption by individual over time for the last week? Here's another use case. One of our employees was terminated recently and we believe they've downloaded large volumes of company information just before leaving. Can you create a graph that shows a baseline of normal downloads for each of the user's devices for the last three months? We want to see if there was a large spike just prior to the termination date to see if we should investigate further. In each of these use cases, we can use summarizations with counts and charts to more easily visualize the problem and solution and see trends and anomalies, which would be more challenging with just large numbers alone on a table. For today's homework, we use the LA demo environment. 
If you need instructions on how to access this free data set, refer to session seven of the beginner series. Using the security event table, build a chart or graph that shows the count of security events by computer. Make sure you use bin buckets and adjust the resolution as needed to a level that shows anomalies. See if you find any large spikes in security events that may be worth investigating further. That's it for today's session on charts and graphs. In the next session, we'll introduce variables. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.